Hi guys, how you doing? Uh, Dave the Drummer here. Um, yeah, I'm in the studio and um, was playing around with uh, a track last night with uh, a collaborator friend of mine, uh, Phil Kershaw, who we've done a few tracks together and we were online last night and he pointed me, yeah, i, I got to give him full credit for discovering this VST, it's, it's quite mind-blowing. It's called Goyo and basically what it was we were playing around with this idea of that we're, we're doing a kind of acid track and it's for a, a kind of um free palestine um um charity type cause right and um you know uh we, we, so we were kind of getting on with this track and at one point we were thinking oh maybe it'd be a good idea to maybe find some like traditional palestinian music and uh, and drop something like that into the track or maybe have it in the background or something. I don't know, whatever. It was an idea, you know, we were just playing around with it. And he said, oh, well, I've just come across this plugin that you can use to separate vocals from music. Now, if anybody's tried to do this before online using AI, you'll probably realise there's varying degrees of success. I've used um, an online um, web website called Songs to Stems, and I thought it was pretty good, but at the end of the day, they always want a subscription. Everybody wants, they always want money out of you, don't they? Nothing's for free. Well, apart from this, this is free and it does the same thing and it does it in real time, which is amazing because Songs to Stems and all the other websites that I've looked at so far uh, involve you taking an audio file, uploading it, having it processed, and then it gets delivered back to you. And the amount of uh, stems that you want um, you know, normally incurs a higher charge. Now, this doesn't really purport to be anything much more than just literally separating vocals um, from the backing track. So, um, <clears throat> here we go. Voice separator, that's what it's called. Goyo voice separator. AI powered by Supertone. Uh, you've got free uh, control knobs. You've got ambience, uh, voice, voice reverb. You've got a stereo or mono setting, uh, a bypass setting. Uh, you've got a solo and a mute for each of those channels, if you like. So the three channels. Uh, the buttons up here don't do anything other than switch it from serial into mono. So it's like a bit pointless, really. But anyway, um, the great thing is, is that all of this stuff in Ableton Live will show up um, automatically. You didn't have to use the configure. Uh, everything was already set up. And what I did was um, I basically set up my uh, controller, which I've got down here in front of me, which is a uh, a Korg Nano Control, if you can see that. Yeah, I'm just checking the camera. Yeah, you can. Right. Yeah, so you can see that Korg Nano Control. Nothing nothing flash. Use, you, it could be anything. Any MIDI control will do it. Uh, so, yeah, so I've got uh, channel number one controls my ambience uh vo channel number two controls my voice and channel number three controls my voice reverb and i also uh, just for the sake of like silliness i also set up a, an effect send here with some a kind of dub delay on it as well just for the, you that that will become clear in a minute um yeah so i could have um um, I could have set up MIDI controllers for the solo and mute buttons instead, but I decided I wanted a little bit more control over the volume. I wanted to maybe like fade the volume in as opposed to it just going in and turning on and turning off. So you could do that. That is there as a, as as an option as well. If I switch into the MIDI map really quickly, uh, you'll see that I've actually also had to set my maximums to 50 so uh, to sort of halfway so that when I move my slider it doesn't push the the volume all the way up to kind of plus 12 which is uh, much too high I'm not really even quite sure why it does that but anyway so let's start off with the Palestinian vocal that's what we were doing first of all so here it is sounds like this you can see the waveform right let's take the ambience out and we'll take the voice reverb out as well it sounds a little bit digitized doesn't it? it's not perfect but it's not bad i mean for throwing a vocal into uh, a techno track for example like what we were going to do and just taking maybe a couple of snippets it's not bad if it was yeah, if it was a pop vocal and you really were attempting like a proper remix and you didn't have the stem, 
nah, maybe this wouldn't be accurate enough for that kind of thing. Um, you know, it's only going to get you a certain amount of the way there. But yeah, and when you get to this part of this track, what we noticed was that it didn't seem to pick up the backing vocals and it left them in. So let's go, let's go on. So the lead vocal stops here and these backing vocals come in. And when you try and take them out, it doesn't work so well. And if you try and pull them out, they're kind of still there. Now if we go back to the lead vocal bit again and try and pull that out. It's not bad, is it? It's not bad. I mean it's it's a it's a quite a kind of complicated audio file, isn't it? Because there's a lot going a lot of detail going on in the mid-range. There's not a lot of separation between instruments. There are a lot of instruments that have a very similar kind of frequency range. You've got kind of things like um, you know, stringed instruments and drums and vocals and they all they're all kind of in a sort of mid-range kind of area so th this must be quite a difficult thing for it to to separate when we go to the reggae track you actually get some much more impressive results so let's play the reggae track reggae music i did that for the urban music in the uk okay it was the savior, yeah, yeah, yeah. a reggae given flavor. I did not defeat them, yes, I did not defeat them. Reggae, I did not defeat them. If I miss a reggae, I did not defeat them. Let's take the voice out. Oh, let's put the vo vocal reverb in. Forgot about that. Reggae music influence a lot of music. Reggae music got the vibes, that's why they chose it. You could have call it dubstep, jungle, dumb and bass, garage. Reggae vibes, they might be you. Say the voice out. It's not bad, is it? Really? Yes, line they want them where rumble. Just to prove that the voice is actually still there. Them take them better, better beat of the drum man, better, better speed up the eye and take them better, better bass, better, better bass and I'm make it so fun. Put it in some for here and some for there and don't be light. Yeah, so for doing like a live cut up of uh, somebody else's tune or one of your own tunes or anything that's be, that's been recorded in stereo with a vo with a voice, um, yeah. It, it, it's brilliant. So yeah. Anyway, we thought, what would it sound like if um, we tried Goyo on um, on a movie sample? You know, the kind of sample that you might use in a in a track. Maybe drop it into a breakdown or something like that. And uh, obviously, I've done that loads of times. And uh, we got this. I found uh, the uh, sample from Man on Fire, which is a Denzel Washington movie. Everybody probably knows that one. It's really good. And um, we found this corking little sample which we put in the middle of one of our tracks called Bomb in the Arse um, and um, that's been around for a while now. Anyway, so Denzel's got somebody tied to a car and he's in the, he's in the subway and, um, and he's got a bomb in their arse basically and, uh, and he's explaining what's going to happen to them which isn't very nice. Um, and there's quite a lot of uh, background noise. Now, we left all the background noise in with this sample, actually, when we put it in the track, and it sound, I thought it sounded really good, and there's some sort of, like, meow kind of noises going. There's a, it's in an underpass, so there's cars going past and stuff like that. But now we've got the option to cut it all out. Show you what I got here. See this? This is a charger. It's used by convicts to hide money and drugs. They stick it in their body. They tuck it up their rectum. You familiar with that? This. Look at me. Pencil detonator, timer, used as a receiver, transmitter, C4, highly explosive. You put them all together, you got a bomb. Not very sophisticated, but very powerful. That's what you have in your ass right now. Don't move, don't move, don't move. It's not bad, is it, really? I mean, you, you can hear it. This is, pro, pro, this is processing in... Uh, real time as opposed to you uh, sending something off and getting it processed so it gives you the option to kind of play with the sample while you've got it in the mix and while you're playing around and you know you don't have to jump out of your workflow in your door um, but it's not 100% perfect either so Obviously, I'm aware of that. However, there's one more thing just quickly to have a quick look at, which is what does it sound like 
when everything's on and you switch it in and out i mean what do, how transparent is the plugin itself does it affect the sound of the music going through it when it's not doing anything so if we set all the levels to zero let's play that reggae track again and i'll just turn goyo off and turn it back on again and let's see if we can hear any difference There's a tiny difference. It is in there. It might take a little while to hear it. At first, actually, when I did my first version of this video, I was actually really like, ah, oh, it's, it's, it's perfect. It sounds great. But actually, now I'm getting used to the sound of it. I've begun to realise that there is, there are artefacts in there. You can hear them in the lower frequencies, definitely. There are some slight artifacts but then it depends how it depends what you're doing to so how important that is for example if you were doing let's say you created two tracks here you know we, we duplicated a track here um and we had like several reggae tunes on one track and several reggae tunes on another and we wanted to mix and match the vocal from one reggae tune with another and so on um and then you wanted to play that out as a mix, you might not find the audio quality acceptable enough, or you might, I'm not sure. If you are just, like I said before, if you're just taking something like Man on Fire and you know, you, you've got kind of a lot of background music going on in your, if you just wanted to dump that into your track, you could render it out as um, you know, with it being with it processed, uh, or you could re-record it into another track, or resample it, or whatever. However, you wanted to do it, or you could just leave the the Goyo uh, voice separator just running live and just throw it into a track. And I think in that kind of situation, it probably probably be fine. But if you really wanted to take, uh, uh, or for a, like a rough bootleg or something like that, it's slightly rough. Put it that way, it is slightly rough. Um, but I think it's usable. I think it's well usable for quite a lot of applications. And um, and the fact that it's completely flexible and the fact that you can just run it live and just dump any piece of audio into your door and just throw this plugin on it. Oh, yeah, that's well handy. So uh, anyway, there you go, Goyo. I know, I, the one thing I've got to stress is I haven't got anything to do with Goyo. I don't know who they are. They haven't paid me to make this video or anything like that. We literally, we just found it last night on the internet. We were so blown away by it. We're like, oh man, we can't, we can't do something about this plugin. It is brilliant. So, um, so here it is. This is my little thing about it. So check it out. Uh, it is free. I'll put all the details uh, in with this video on uh, YouTube. And uh, if, if it goes up on Facebook, I'll put the details in a comment or something like that. So, but definitely uh, go and check it out if you ever want to use a little bit of AI to uh, separate a vocal from backing track this is this is your man this is a good start so uh, anyway thanks very much for watching see you later